Dr. Stocks, thanks for joining us again on Health Connection. Good to see you again. Our topic is the effect that pain has on sleep. And we were let off here. A significant number of people who have sleep problems also have chronic pain. Is there a connection? Um, for patients that have uh, chronic sleep complaints, uh, often pain can be a cause, but often pain can also be a consequence of rotten sleep. Sometimes it's difficult to know which came first, uh, the pain uh, or the sleep disruption. But yes, they often go hand in hand. Uh, pain does not make a very good bed partner. What are the most common causes of the pain and sleep problem? What, what brings all of this phenomena about? For most of us, uh, the, the problem with pain has to do with arthritic issues uh, and getting older. Um, yes, young people can have trauma and, and have temporary pain complaints and, and sleep troubles that are a result of it, soon after surgery, soon after an injury. But for older people, chronic pain is often a, a daily way of life. And uh, not only do they have to learn how to manage and, and live with chronic pain, uh, med medical therapy is not always successful and medication is not always desired. And they must also then learn how to deal with the consequences of chronic pain, which include a disruption or interruption of sleep. Well, what is the process? How does pain affect sleep quality? All of us uh, go through various stages of sleep. Uh, when we're young, we talk about light sleep and deep sleep and dream sleep. Uh, the difference between light sleep and deep sleep is, uh, is simply how easily we're uh, woken up out of sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're in deep sleep, uh, you could set a cannon off and not wake us up. When we're in light sleep, uh, uh, the merest change uh, in the environment might wake us up. The air conditioning turning on, a neighbor dog barking, our, our spouse or bed partner uh, rolling over in bed, all of those things can wake us up. And when we're in light sleep, chronic pain is more prone to waking us up. As we get older, what happens to our sleep is that our sleep becomes largely composed of simply dream sleep and light sleep. Past the age of 65, we generally don't have deep sleep at all. So that what that means is not that sleep's more poor, but that sleep is more easily disturbed. And physical problems such as stomach upset, arthritis pain, headaches, which might not have awakened us if we were lucky enough to be in deep sleep, are now more easily able to wake us up since all we have is, for the most part, light sleep. A recent study has found that people with chronic pain may actually benefit from more sleep. Why would that be so? One of the reactions that we have to rotten sleep is that we adopt habits that actually um, uh, d defeat our, our goals of getting better sleep. We start to go to bed at irregular times. We get out of bed at irregular times. We take naps on and off throughout the daytime, which is not so easily available when you're still working and young, but once we hit retirement age, yeah, we can take as much nap time as we want, by and large. And so all of these things that we do actually undermine our ability to get good, solid, mm -hmm. contiguous, or, or one solid stretch of sleep at night. So the end result is that we tend to get less sleep than we should. Um, so if we were to adopt a a, a habit of going to bed at a regular time, a habit of getting out of bed at a regular time, a, a habit of, of minimizing or avoiding excessive daytime naps, uh, excessive alcohol or caffeine, all of those things might actually allow us to get a little longer period of sleep at night. And one of the consequences of that is we may find that chronic pain issues uh, may be less of a problem. Not necessarily that we hurt less, but that it bothers us less. Mm -hmm. And w I've often told the story, when you're a, in a good mood and you stub your toe, it's a few choice words and it's over and done with. When you're in a bad mood, when you're extra tired and you stub your toe, it, it's as if the world caved in on you. You hurt much more, your reaction is more. And in terms of sleep, 
now we're sitting there not just struggling to sleep, but cursing the fact that we can't and making it all the more likely that we won't sleep. Can sleep disorders like sleep ac apnea actually cause pain, bring pain about? That's a complicated question, and I'm going to say a simple answer is yes, but with a big question mark on the end of it. If I take a normal, healthy person and I repeatedly wake them up you know, dozens to hundreds of times in a night, brief wake-ups, just touching them on the shoulder, for example, calling their name repeatedly, if I disrupt your sleep enough, you're going to wake up tired in the morning and you are going to have certain complaints that your muscles are stiff, that you're a little sore, that you're tender in certain spots. Uh, symptoms that in other circumstances we, we label as fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. So if I have somebody with untreated sleep apnea and they're waking up repeatedly at night, it's not uncommon that they have a bit more of a problem with body aches and pains. Uh, do they actually get fibromyalgia? No, they have sleep apnea, but they nonetheless hurt. All right. What are the long-term health effects of poor quality sleep that's caused by chronic pain? We know that people who don't get uh, enough sleep um, have a poorer survival. They don't live as long as people who get good sleep. Is, is that uh, the cause or the effect? It's hard to separate. What we know is, is that if you have chronic problems with your sleep, you're likely to have chronic problems with your mood, and you're more likely to run to the doctor, you're more likely to spend money on medicines, uh, you're not going to be as happy a camper uh, simply because mm -hmm. you're chronically getting rotten sleep. Well, so let's say you suffer from chronic pain. What can you do to improve the quality of sleep and get more restful sleep? In, if it's a, at all possible, you need to deal medically uh, with the pain to try to find a cause and an appropriate solution. If that's uh, seeing a pain specialist, if that's uh, having uh, surgical procedures or injections or taking chronic pain medication, uh, it's important that one do, you know, due diligence and in, in, in trying to uh, deal with the pain. Find the cause, try to deal with it as best as possible. Secondly, one should avoid all of those things that interrupt or interfere with good healthy sleep. Avoid excessive uh, caffeine. Limit your caffeine consumption to the morning hours or early afternoon. And, and limit it to say no more than two or three cups of coffee per day. Avoid uh, excessive amounts of alcohol late in the evening. Uh, exercise is good, uh, regular aerobic exercise promotes good healthy and deeper sleep, but you probably, if at all possible, should do your exercise not at bedtime. Y you, you can't go to bed if you've just revved up the engine. Uh -huh. you, you go to bed and you successfully sleep when you're settling down. So get your exercise over with a little earlier in the night. Uh, and lastly, the, the general rules about good quality sleep are to try to go to bed at a regular time, try to get out of bed in the morning at a regular time, regardless of how well you slept the night before. There's a temptation when you had a bad night to sleep in three or four hours, and that actually interferes with the next night. It's a good habit to have a regular go to bed and a regular get out of bed time day after day. Uh, young people get away with abusing themselves Friday, Saturday mm -hmm. nights a little bit, they still feel rotten on Monday, but older people have uh, severe consequences about, uh, about toying with their good habits, with their internal clocks. Uh, if one can uh, avoid uh, all the bad habits, uh, generally you can at least minimize the effects that pain will have on your sleep. You may not eliminate it altogether, but at least you might be able to improve how you feel. Chronic pain, sleep problems, it's going on. At what point is it time to see a doctor? When day after day is, uh, uh, is difficult. When you wake up every morning and you feel miserable, when you're tired all day, when your mood is uh, a problem, 
um, when you're falling asleep uh, or wish you could fall asleep at, at, in the morning and the afternoon more than the siesta time. Uh, when, when sleep every night, night after night, is a chore, uh, it's time to talk with, it, talk with your doctor about it. Maybe see a sleep specialist, but it, it's, it's definitely time to stop suffering alone. Very well. Doctor, always good to see you and thank good you. To see you sir.